Hello, everyone. Welcome to SRE Summit Canada 2024. Uh, and I, I hope all the audience is enjoying this uh, summit. And today's speaker is Neha Surindranath, and she's going to talk on DevOps in the age of distributed systems. So I welcome Neha, and Neha, the floor is all yours. Uh, you can go start it. Uh, hi, Jay. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be presenting here at the um, SRE Summit Canada 2024. Uh, I will be talking about uh, DevOps in the age of uh, distributed systems. Uh, we'll cover topics in uh, LinkedIn's SRE world, uh, such as observability, logs and metrics, and why these are important tools that provide visibility into the system's behavior and health. A little bit about me. Uh, my name is Neha and I'm a TPM at LinkedIn. Um, at LinkedIn, I've been part of the team that uh, develops and maintains a critical observability infrastructure, uh, including uh, logging, metrics, and tracing solutions. Uh, my mission here is to ensure that our systems are, are robust, uh, scalable, and provide an excellent user experience uh, by leveraging advanced observability practices. So in today's agenda, we'll, co uh, we'll cover our, uh, the guiding uh, principles, uh, why DevOps is critical for LinkedIn's operation, the uh, goals of DevOps strategy at LinkedIn, uh, we'll cover high-level architecture, and dive a little deeper into observability. Um, so moving on to what is our mission, uh, our mission is to enable a seamless, unified uh, deployment experience. Uh, so what does this mean? Uh, this means that uh, we want to ensure that the uh, process of rolling out updates or changes to any service uh, within LinkedIn is smooth, efficient, and consistent. Our vision is to empower every team to reliably deploy their service in an automated fashion. Uh, we aspire to create an environment where the uh, developers or any team that is deploying their code uh, changes, they are able to deploy it with confidence, knowing that the uh, deployment process is reliable and hassle-free. We also value the ability to deliver deployments quickly and reliably. This means reducing the time it takes to deploy changes while ensuring that the uh, deployment process is robust. So as a team, we are committed uh, to boosting productivity by streamlining the uh, deployment process, by eliminating manual interventions. Our aim is to uh, free up valuable time and resources for teams so that they can focus more on any of like the value added work. <clears throat> we also uh, recognize the importance of uh, reducing toil. So we are aiming to minimize this by improving the overall deployment experience. So uh, why is DevOps uh, critical for LinkedIn's operation? In the uh, competitive landscape of social networking and professional platforms, uh, the ability to quickly uh, deploy new features and updates is very crucial. Uh, DevOps practices, uh, particularly uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment, known as CICD, uh, enables LinkedIn to roll out changes rapidly responding to uh, user feedback and market demands swiftly. So DevOps also fosters a culture of collaboration and continuous improvement. By breaking down silos between uh, development, operations, and other teams, uh, LinkedIn pivots more easily when priorities and external conditions change. This, this flexibility um, is essential for maintaining relevance and meeting uh, user needs in a dynamic digital world. A LinkedIn platform must be reliable and uh, stable to maintain user trust and satisfaction. So DevOps practices like automated testing, monitoring, and incident management ensures that the uh, potential issues are identified and resolved before they impact users. Uh, we also have many inbuilt tools for logging that provides real-time insights into our uh, system performance enabling uh, proactive maintenance and uh, quick recovery from failures. Um, by adopting infrastructure as code, IAC, and configuration management tools like Ansible, LinkedIn ensures consistent and uh, predictable infrastructure configurations across all environments. 
This consistency reduces the risk of configuration drift and unexpected issues, contributing to overall system reliability. Also, as LinkedIn's user base continues to grow, the uh, platform must scale efficiently to accommodate increasing traffic and data. DevOps practices facilitate this scalability by automating infrastructure management and leveraging cloud technologies. Kubernetes, for example, orchestrates uh, containerized applications, ensuring that uh, resources are allocated dynamically based on demand. DevOps also enables LinkedIn to optimize the use of computing resources, ensuring that the uh, platform can handle peak loads without over-provisioning. This efficiency not only supports scalability, but also reduces operational cost, allowing LinkedIn to invest more in innovation and user experience improvements. Now, moving on to the goals of DevOps strategy at LinkedIn. One of our primary goal is to increase the velocity and frequency of our deployments. This rapid iteration allows us to respond to user feedback promptly and continuously improves our platform. Reliability and stability are crucial for maintaining user trust and satisfaction. We focus on building resilient systems through automated testing, monitoring, and fault tolerance architecture. By providing and also proactively identifying the, uh, and addressing the potential uses before they affect the end users, we ensure that LinkedIn remains a dependable platform for our professionals worldwide. At LinkedIn, we also believe in the uh, power of continuous improvement. We an encourage our teams to regularly evaluate and enhance our processes, tools, and workflows. This mindset helps us innovate and adapt to, change, to changing needs, ensuring that we uh, remain at the forefront of technology and best practices in the industry. Um, efficient resource management is also key to maintaining performance while controlling cost. This not only improves system performance, but also reduces operational costs. Uh, security and compliance are also very integral to our uh, operations. We integrate security checks into our DevOps pipeline, ensuring that every code change is scrutinized for uh, vulnerabilities. By adhering to uh, regulatory requirements and implementing robust security measures, we protect user data and maintain compliance within industry standards. As LinkedIn continues to grow, our systems need to scale efficiently. Uh, we design our architecture and processes to support this growth seamlessly. By leveraging uh, scalable infrastructure, we ensure that our platform can handle increased traffic and user demand without compromising performance. We also uh, break down silos between our development operations and other teams to foster a collaborative environment. Cross-functional teams work together on shared goals, enhancing productivity and ensuring that everyone is aligned towards our common objectives. Now, moving into uh, an architectural uh, deep dive of um, the uh, LinkedIn continuous deployment. Um, this is the high level topology of uh, LCD, which stands for LinkedIn continuous deployment. The first layer that you see is the front end layer that is powered by an user interface, mainly used by developers once they have a version of a code that needs to be deployed. <clears throat> The uh, technology layer of this UI is built using Backstage, which is an open source framework for building developer portals that helps uh, them manage, create, and explore the software ecosystem. Backstage was originally developed as an internal tool at Spotify and open sourced in March 2020. The middle layer that you see is the backend layer and has some unique components. The DGS layer, which stands for the uh, Deployment Gateway uh, Service, um, it serves as the gateway service for LinkedIn Continuous Deployment tool. It powers the end user requests and operations coming from the UI. 
The next one is Airflow. Apache Airflow is an open source platform designed to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor workflows. It is used to manage workflow orchestration for data engineering and other automation tasks. So some of the key features of Airflow are DAGs. DAGs are, are directed uh, acyclic graphs. So workflows in Airflow are defined as DAGs. A DAG is a collection of tasks with directional dependencies, meaning tasks are executed in a specific order without any cycles. The next one is scheduling. Airflow provides robust scheduling capabilities, um, which allows users to define when and how workflows should run. This includes uh, support for cron-like syntax to specify schedule uh, int intervals. Last but not the least is uh, extensibility. Airflow is uh, highly extensible uh, with a rich set of inbuilt operators and the ability to create custom operators, hooks, and sensors to interact with uh, internal systems and services. Now, moving on to other components such as DT and DPE. DT stands for Deployment Transparency. It stores the deployment history and details for all the uh, deployments. It resolves uh, states of the uh, deployment. DGS and DT together power the UI for performing uh, deployment operations, displaying deployment details, as well as searching and indexing deployment history. So we have designed the architecture in a very modular fashion. So each component you see here is quite re replaceable. For example, the uh, deployment policy engine, which is a one-stop shop for all deployment-related policy policies, is built on top of Open Policy Agent. OPA is an open source uh, general purpose policy engine that enables unified context-aware policy enforcements across a wide range of systems and applications. It's designed for cloud-native environments to uh, help implement fine-grained access control and policy decisions. This entire architecture is low QPS system, but guarantees that deployment pipelines will execute certainly, and if it fails, user will get alerted. <clears throat> now moving into the importance of observability in distributed systems. What is a distributed system? A distributed system is a collection of independent computers that work together to appear as a single coherent system to end users. These computers communicate and coordinate their actions by passing messages to one another over a network. What are the key characteristics of a distributed system? The first one is multiple components. Uh, distributed systems are composed of multiple autonomous components, often referred to as nodes or services. Each component performs a specific function and can operate independently, but they work together to achieve a common goal. For example, in a microservices architecture, uh, different services handle different aspects of an application, like user authentication, payment processing, and inventory management. The uh, network communication uh, is the next um, uh, portion of it. The uh, components in a distributed system communicate and coordinate their actions by exchanging messages over a network. This communication can happen over local networks, wide area networks, or even the internet. The network plays a crucial role in ensuring that the components can share data and work together efficiently. What are some of like the uh, complexities that are involved in the uh, distributed systems? So managing and coordinating multiple components adds to a lot of complexity. Developers and operators need to handle issues like network latency, data consistency, and, tol and fault tolerance. Also ensuring that all components have a consistent view of the system's state can be challenging especially when dealing with distributed databases or transactions. So uh, consistency is also a challenge. 
uh, finally, security is also a complexity because uh, securing distributed system involves protecting communication channels, ensuring authentication and authorization, and safeguarding data across multiple nodes. All right. Now, moving into the uh, overview of uh, some of the uh, key concepts in observability, this includes logs, metrics, and tracing. The underlying uh, technology here is Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is a complex system due to its distributed and dynamic nature, mm -hmm. managing a large number of containers and services across multiple nodes. <clears throat> which makes it difficult to manually monitor and manage. This is where observability comes in by providing insight to the health, performance, and behavior of applications and clusters. By definition, observability is about understanding the internal state of a system by examining the uh, data it produces. Think of it like a doctor diagnosing a, pa a patient by looking at their symptoms. Observability allows us to infer what's happening inside the system from the outside. So although observability and monitoring are often mentioned together, they serve different purposes. Monitoring involves collecting and analyzing data and metrics from the Kubernetes cluster to ensure it's performing as expected. This can include things like checking CPU usage, memory uh, usage, and network uh, traffic of the uh, cluster and its components, such as pods and nodes. For observability, we can say that it's built on top of monitoring. Observability includes monitoring, but goes beyond it to analyze logs, traces, and other techniques that can provide insights into the behavior of the application as a whole. So there are four pillars of observability. The first one is logs. The definition refers to logging as the practice of collecting and storing data about events and activities that occur within um, a cluster in order to monitor and diagnose issues with applications and infrastructure. In Kubernetes, we use logging to keep track of what's happening in the uh, cluster of our application. For example, if there is an error, we can look at the logs to figure out what went wrong. The second pillar of observability is metrics. Uh, the definition refers to metrics as the data which is collected from different components of the cluster to monitor and measure the health and performance of the system. Metrics can provide insights into key aspects of the cluster, such as CPU usage, memory usage, network traffic, and other performance-related data. Tools such as uh, Prometheus, uh, Dynatrace, and Datadog helps us fetch uh, such metrics. Uh, Grafana also provides a better view of these metrics using dashboard. The third pillar is tracing. Um, the definition refers to tracing as the practice of collecting and analyzing data about the requests that flow through uh, the system in order to identify and diagnose issues with application performance and behavior. The uh, new pillar that has been recently uh, introduced is profiling. It is the latest addition to the uh, pillars of uh, observability. It refers to the practice of analyzing and performance of the application and cluster in order to identify areas of inefficiency that may be impacting the uh, performance. So profiling can help us understand how applications are using resources like CPU, memory, and identify areas where optimization may be needed to improve the performance. So now moving into uh, the overview and um, key uh, components of observability. Let's look into what are the uh, benefits of observability and how AI can be leveraged in observability. So observability provides comprehensive insights into our system behavior, allowing all the teams to detect and address issues before they escalate into major outages. This results in higher uh, system uptime and reliability. 
with detailed logs, metrics, and traces, uh, developers and operators can quickly pinpoint to the root cause of issues. This means this reduces uh, mean time to our detection, which stands for MTTD, and mean time to resolution, MTTR. Um, this minimizes the uh, downtime. Uh, observability enables proactive monitoring and system performance. So by identifying performance bottlenecks and uh, resource constraints early, teams can take preventive measures to ensure smooth operation. Um, by also maintaining high uh, system performance and reliability, observability directly contributes to a better user experience. Um, users encounter fewer issues and enjoy more uh, responsive applications. Um, another um, a benefit of observability is that observability tools and uh, practices foster better collaboration between development operations and business teams. So shared visibility into system health and performance helps align priorities and improves communication. So now moving into the um, how AI uh, can be leveraged uh, in observability. Uh, the first one is uh, anomaly detection. So AI can automatically uh, detect unusual patterns in logs, metrics, and traces, identifying potential issues before they can escalate. For example, AI algorithms can flag abnormal spikes in CPU usage or error rates, enabling faster response times. AI can uh, analyze vast amounts of data to identify the root causes of issues more quickly and accurately. AI can also uh, predict when components are likely to fail based on historical data trends. This allows for proactive maintenance, reducing downtime and improving system reliability. For instance, AI can forecast hardware failures or software degradations, prompting timely maintenance actions. Finally, AI-driven systems can take predefined actions to remediate issues automatically. For example, if an anomaly is detected, the system might scale up resources, restart services, or even roll back deployments without any human intervention, thus reducing downtime. Uh, with this, I am at the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to me uh, via LinkedIn. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak here. Thank you, Neha. I think this was a great in-depth presentation on DevOps. I hope audience will definitely get some key takeaways in terms of observability, logs, tracing, and definitely the in-depth uh, SRE architecture. Thank you, everyone.